Hello everyone. Uh, uh, very good afternoon. I know it's very hot here, at least in the North India. Hope things are fine at your end. So we are back with yet another session of Pioneer Patshala. And through this initiative of Pioneer Patshala, we try to help our customers, which is essentially you, understand the nuances of online selling better, discuss on the most pinching of the issues that you are facing, and lastly, helping you uh, and your business grow and what should be the planning around that. So today, uh, on this Pioneer Patshala session, we are going to discuss something very interesting. <laughs> you all would be aware that Amazon Prime Day will be taking place on July 12th and 13th. And obviously, we are sure that you would be already making plans around it and how to get best out of it. But what we want to discuss here is how do you retain these customers after the Prime Day also? It shouldn't be the case that you get a lot of customers on Prime Day and then post that it is normal PAU for you. So how do you retain these customers? How do you ensure that the customers who visited your store or bought something from you during the Prime Day remain with you as a customer even after the Prime Day? And that is exactly what we are going to discuss today. So here we have uh, Ms. Priyanka with us from Seller App. She's currently leading the marketing and the business uh, partnerships in Seller App. And she has a very rich experience of over 10 years in marketing, finance, and advertisement. And owing to this experience, she has been able to build a lot of brands and manage the growth of these businesses. So over to you, Priyanka, a very hearty welcome. And let's start discussing on this. Thank you so much, Pritseek. It's uh, great uh, being here and thanks for having me over. I think this topic is very synonymous to a lot of the sellers out there and a lot of them will actually, you know, quite connect or resonate with this topic. Most of them want to know what it's all about and how to retarget, what are the specific strategies to cater to and so on. And I think Prime Day in itself is one of the biggest events for sellers uh, on Amazon. You know, this 48-hour sale really hikes up the profits for sellers with no at no end. So um, I think for 2022, Amazon has really decided to hold the sales as per this regular tradition and during, you know, as you mentioned, during the month of uh, 12th and 13th, and we're looking forward to how this will pan out. It was great. Uh, 2021, the prime day for 2021 has been great. I'm going to discuss some of the statistics uh, going forward in the presentation, and then we'll take it up from there. So um, can I go ahead and share my screen now? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Prime Day 2021, of course, what transpired uh, from last year. And then, of course, we're going to be discussing what were the hot topics and uh, top selling categories uh, for last year as well. But some of the stats that you see right here, there were 11.9 billion in global sales, uh, a plus 7.6% increase compared to the previous year, the 2020. And of course, growth in small retailers was 21.3%. Now, Prime Day 2021 was held much earlier than usual, I would say, and not just this, it also was just held, I think, six months uh, after Prime Day 2020. So even then, it did manage to hit these record sales of 11.3 billion, which roughly translates to about 4 million uh, a minute. So that's quite a number. And um, as, as we see, the retailer section also kind of won by 21.3% increase in the number of small retailers this year. So we can see a lot of new sellers are embarking on the uh, Amazon journey. More and more people are moving from small pop shops, going digital, uh, putting their sales online and so on. So a lot of this uh, is also what we are looking into. Uh, the second thing, I also see some of the demographics here, the average age as you can see here, it has been between 35 to 44. There has been products worth 100, but less than 20, uh, 22%. And more than five orders were placed per household. Now, I think another data point would be that 90% of the shoppers, and I was reading that in some of the you know reports or something or some blog here, that 90% of the shoppers are Prime Day members with 7% of them signing up in just on the day of the sale, just to make the most of it, right? So on an average, I think um, uh, Amazon did receive 2.8 orders per household with again, about five of them separate of, uh, separately per household as well. So 46% of those prime owners actually said that, you know, it's a major reason for them, this day itself is a major reason for them to buy off Amazon and make use of all those discounts, deals, coupons, lightning deals, bundle offers that they offer, making the sale even more important for sellers to get good visibility of their brand and of their product. 
Now we'll move into what can be expected uh, from 2022. <clears throat> So as you can see, I have you know, listed down some of the popular categories that did really well. Um, you know, uh, electronics, healthcare products, pet supplies, clothing, shoes, interior, home decor, uh, home decor, home and kitchen, and so on. These were the popular categories of last year. I also feel that these would be some of the categories that we can expect to see. In fact, not just Prime Day, electronics is one that whether it's Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas Day sales, this has been like a constant category which has kind of ruled the roost in any season or any seasonal part of the year, you know, so this has been a, a great category that people want to um, embark on and a lot of people are actually buying on these particular sale, big day sale events, right? Um, it is the most sold category, as I mentioned, and Amazon devices to buy also have been part of this. So in 2022, I would say you can expect there to be higher sales in this category as well with people looking for maybe airports, laptops, TV as the keywords. They can be looking for all of these keywords. It has been a popular category, um, not just for like Q4 sales past year, but garnering about 44% of the sales of Amazon of 2021 as well. So it has been a constant popular category. Um, healthcare, I would say, will still remain a very popular category, which is also very sought after particularly after the pandemic and people are still stocking up on those medical essentials for the year. And, you know, Amazon remains to be a market where people want to purchase from. So um, this has been the go-to market for stocking up all these medical supplies and so on. I think uh, another one, home improvement and the home body economy is really thriving uh, in, in 2022 as well, with a lot of the customers who have actually returned back to you know, offices and, you know, they've normalized and back to the pre-pandemic lives, I would still say 60% of consumers still plan to spend more time. And if they do have an option to work from home, they are, uh, you know, choosing that more so than, than uh, going uh, to the office and all. So they're spending more time in uh, home in 2022. So as we saw, you know, a lot of these, again, coming back to electronics, you know, they're setting up their home offices in their homes, and you know, purchasing all those desktops and screens and so on, a lot of those things is happening. But also, just because you know people are tending to spend more time at home, it does mean that they wanna, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not gonna purchase anything. They are also gonna look for home improvement because the majority of the time is being spent there. Fifty percent of the consumers, I would say, will be willing to spend more money on their homes more than like now more than ever before. Um, they've also put a lot of focus on self care. Uh, wellness products and so on. So that would also be, uh, uh, you know, a big uh, push for the customers to embark on of these products. And I think consumers have a great interest now of um, cooking at home. And I really saw during the lockdown, everybody was, you know, cooking different sorts of meals and, you know, they're all posting it online, showcasing their, um, what you call it, their cooking skills and all of that. So I think uh, versus eating out, I think that has also become a norm now. So again, because of those reasons, um, you know, they, and also a lot of customers will just typically maybe decorate their house or take more interest in interior design and so on. So that's what I would say, and I've covered these categories here. So moving on again, now retargeting uh, your Prime Day um, audience. I have six strategies that actually will cover the whole spectrum. All of you need to really retarget your, you know, Priyanka, I have one question. So, sorry to cut you, but sorry, I have one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I paused. Yes. I, I'm so, so, so yeah, positive. there's a lot of information coming in. So even I have you know few questions because you talked about four major uh, categories here, right? Right. But obviously these are the categories which would be catering to maybe around 70 to 80 percent of the volumes flowing through Amazon. But if you have to pick up say maybe one specific category that you know this is the top bet for 2022, and this should be the one maybe getting the maximum volumes or getting the maximum growth indeed. Which one do you think would would you pick and buy? And I know this is solely your views and does not respond to anything, but yes. uh, what is your top bet here? Although I've mentioned four categories, which are the leading ones, but I would say my bet would be in uh, home and kitchen will be my top okay. bet. And it's it's no surprise that this is the most popular among sellers because, you know, for obvious reasons, we've seen everyone use some sort of, you know, kitchen or home equipment in their daily day-to-day -day use and you know lives yeah. and so on so this is not just the only reason why i place my bets on this category 
Also, there are many reasons just because um, there's a low barrier to entry. Selling in this category is more like is far more easier than others just because it does not restrict new sellers from entering into the market, from coming into the market. Right. You know, you can, you can, there's a list of restricted categories that you can also uh, get online and so on. It is also a more intuitive product idea. You know, everyone has some sort of kitchen equipment, as I mentioned, or some home product in their house. You can think of spatulas, ladders, um, pillows, curtains, home, bed sheets. There's so many, right? So, but it's right. in other categories, such as you, if you would say like industrial, scientific, or computers, electronics, you know, you know, there's so much of innovation that's coming in and there's so much of, uh, it's not just like a product that you can just readily bring out in the market, right? Without right. putting much thought to it. These electronics and gadgets will require that much of thinking and a lot of processes behind before even entering into the market, right? So this is, so to speak, a low barrier entry for me. Also, it has a lot lesser complicated requirements. So what I mean by that is if you have supplement sellers, they do need to follow Amazon guidelines and a lot of compliance, legal uh, federal regulations and uh, food must just have like an expiration date, right? I mean, it's just a perishable item. So right. I think um, <clears throat> all these sellers were not like restricted during Q4. And I think home and kitchen does have many or rather very few of these regulations that they need to adhere to. That would be one. Right. And another one would be like, it's also very easy to manufacture. Uh, so, you know, it's very, yeah. very easy as, as I mentioned earlier. You don't have to put too much thought, maybe just the designing bit a little bit, but in terms of the raw material and everything, it really does not require you too much time to really uh, make that decision and come out in the market. And having said that, I think it's also very well researched and you know a strong you know PPC strategy in place so if you, to, for you to get good conversions. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons also why um, it is leading in one of those top categories. Definitely, yes. thanks, thanks, Priyanka. Uh, we can go. Ahead. Right. Um, all right. So yes, going back to these uh, strategies, um, I was saying that, you know, I have, I have listed down about six to seven strategies, which will cover every aspect of, you know, how you need to retarget your audience post Prime Day. And also, they're also called lead out strategies. And these really help you uh, build the momentum for your Q4. Uh, the 14 days, not actually not prior, post uh, Prime Day are actually called the lead out days and where sellers see a lot of conversions. And this is the time where you really need to optimize the listings to get good sales volume and just in these two weeks, right? So um, talking about the first category, uh, so the first strategy would be keyword research. Um, and why I lay so much importance on this particular uh, term or keyword research, um, it's that, you know, Identifying the right keywords has really worked for you and you want to leverage those to advantage really going forward. So you should understand what keywords did not work for you, what did not convert for you, what did not lead you to that sale despite you know, advertising them and you need to know which did. So you want to obviously focus on the keywords that were more positive and eliminate those that were negative, right? Uh, and this is from a, a completely from an advertising perspective, which I will of course cover later, but this is purely from an advertising perspective. Once you have the right keywords in place, you should really optimize your listings uh, of your top selling uh, ASINs and also bid higher on those proven uh, keywords to maximize conversions, uh, all of that things. And also two tips that I would say uh, you can use uh, for your prime day retargeting would be manual product attribute targeting for your ASIN uh, brand and category keywords and also automatic target for your close and lose match keywords. I will be covering this later on, but um, just to, I mean, you know, just to go to the basics, I would say, you know, it's a process or keyword research is really a process of finding all the relevant keywords for a product. Those relevant keywords are the search terms that you typically look for or, you know, that a potential customer looks for in order to find that product. So let's take an example of a foldable camping chair. For example, one buyer may search the product using this exact same keyword, but others may also search for just camping chair or foldable outdoor chair or even like small portable chair. Now, all of them, I mean, there's, they all sound similar and they probably can show you similar results with a little bit of moderations and variations and so on. But all these search terms really indicate that they are really looking for a product which is very similar to yours and the one that you are selling. So you need to include all of these uh, keywords in your product listing 
uh, and of course your back end search terms now um you know why is it so important or why this process even though it may seem very basic why is it so important is because Although Amazon may, I mean, it is a marketplace, but it's also something else, just like Google is, it's also SEO. I mean, it's, uh, you know, a search engine, right? So Amazon really makes money from every product that they sell. So what they want you to do is it's marketplace sellers to also do really well because they're making money. It's a very good situation for them. So Amazon gets their bread and butter um from the sales that you guys do and hence they want to or they want to give all of you an opportunity to really showcase your product on the top of those amazon search pages to give you the search results that contain um you know high converting keywords and relevant keywords so that's why i feel that this this particular strategy is extremely important and with good search um, optimization and listing optimization you all product will be really visible will go up in the search rank which makes it the first product listing that anyone will see when they're searching for your product now some of those factors that also entail a good um, keyword is these long tail keywords trending relevancy search volumes or uh, impression rates all of this and i'm going to touch upon this really uh, briefly so you know search volume of a keyword is really evaluating a keyword's popularity is one of the best ways to begin your product. So as you may probably know, the more people um, search for a particular item or a term, then the higher will be the number of potential customers having a product page. So if you target that particular keyword, um, you know, the more people are going to visit that page as well. So it's not easy just finding a keyword with the more search volume and targeting that keyword. If you actually, excuse me, choose a target keyword, with a very high search volume as well as competition, then it'll be extremely difficult for your product to be noticed within the abundance of competition that there is. So at the same time, if you actually pick up a keyword, you know, which has, let's say, no search volume, low competition, then you'll also not get any visitors or conversions. So the trick is to really find keywords that have decent amount or decent amount of search volume and moderate to low competition. Okay. Um, also, the keyword difficulty or you know um competition i would say again it is the first step but you know how it ranks on those amazon serps is really not something that you can estimate i mean you i mean sorry you need to estimate right and how do you do that um the answer is of course fetching those search trends on amazon checking for keywords competition this number will give you an idea if there is a chance for ranking of your product or not and so on then of course the keyword relevancy is something that you know how relevant or important your keywords certain keywords are uh, for your particular listing or that page now amazon a9 also uses uh, keyword relevancy to determine what the listing is all about and that it will be used to determine what keywords will rank for when doing these product searches so although uh, most of them are actually available with seller app also these are some of the metrics that will help you really uh, like i said you know what keywords to choose will help you choose which rel which keywords are relevant, which are trending, um, you know, which you need to include in your product listing. And a lot of these metrics are covered by seller app as well. Uh, another very important one that I do want to bring up is the buyer intent keywords. These are actually search queries that show uh, someone is actively looking uh, to actually make a purchase. These are those, like I can give you um, an example. If someone is looking for, let's say, a uh, wine glass for a girlfriend, you know, something like this. That's a search term. Uh, and this is what we're typing in. So which means it's showing the buyer's intent that he's really looking to gift to somebody special and he has the intent to make a purchase. And hence he's searching for a product like which is the most viable one to buy and so on. So it's actually looking, you know, you once you know these are your buyer intent keywords that your ideal customers are using, you can actually start to target them with relevant content or paid ads and also how do you actually distinguish between keywords with commercial intent and low commercial intent you need to think about the ideal customers buying journey so you know someone in the research phase of their customer journey is really looking for information about a problem or have a product that they really think they can solve a problem they have so they know enough about the basics of that issue which you know they can really research it and now they want to know more details so this is something that will show that there is an intention of the customer to um, buy that product okay um 
Priyanka, we have one specific question right now. Uh, this is what you mentioned. You mentioned something called Amazon A9 right now. So, uh, what exactly is Amazon A9? Can you just quickly, maybe for a couple of seconds, talk about it? So, there is an algorithm by which your product listings are actually indexed. So you okay. and, and that keeps constantly changing with Amazon. So you need to keep abreast of when you're using that particular keyword in your listing, you want to make sure that your listing is indexed because otherwise, if that is not the case, then they will not show up on those Amazon search pages and it will uh, harm your it will hamper your visibility of the product. Sure. Thanks. Uh, we can we can move. Okay. Uh, moving on. Okay, the second strategy that I want to cover is um, optimizing your listing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now um, you can use data of these keywords that you really need to, you know, target and all that. But apart from doing a good keyword research, I think optim using those re keywords, of course, in your listing is extremely important. But also making sure of all the other aspects of having a nice or a good listing uh, will entail product title, bullet points, uh, having a good visually appealing, you know, image, videos and so on. So your product title is perhaps the most important factor that really helps in listing organic, uh, you know, uh, basically responsible for organic ranking of the listings and visibility. And so uh, some of those crucial piece of information that is, or uh, that you need to look for in a product title would be brand name should be there. Uh, if there is any specification that you have, for example, a flavor or a color, uh, you know, particularly about the, the, the feel, the touch and feel or the fabric, whatever that you're using, right? Size, quantity, all of those things, it should come in the first term of your product title. So you can really include your brand. Let's say I'm talking about Adidas shoes and I'm talking about Adidas white shoes or white with golden striped shoes. So then I need to put my brand name and that will also be known as my brand keyword, which I have on the first, excuse me, um, line of my title. Right. The third term is where you really need to add personalized keywords. And this can be, again, pertaining to color, size, uh, as I mentioned earlier, quantity, seasonal. Uh, and I, I'll give you an example of how a good listing also looks like. Um, also, bullet points. I think after your product title, bullet points and descriptions are two areas where you can really focus on and really give as much information about your product. Because honestly, I mean, there aren't people are not, it's not like a store where they can touch and see the product. They can only see it through of what you're showing them to the pictures and images and how vividly you're describing that product. And so, you know, that would also help you in ranking of the product. So I think it should be in detail. Um, also the images and videos that you, you know, uh, use, they should be very visually appealing. And as uh, I think I would say closest to what it really is, right? In terms of colors, dimension, use the proper guy, you know, background when you post those colors and images uh, for your listing and so on. And again, all these guidelines and all these uh, best practices are mentioned there. And you all can, you know, look up Amazon website as well for it. I'm, I'm, I'm advertising on Amazon.com. You can go there and all these things are laid out pretty much there. Um, also, um, optimizing your product descriptions. I would say use this space to really deep dive into your product. Tell your customers why your product is best in the market. You want to talk about how it really differs from the competition. You want to include real life causes to make your product seem more relevant. You want to include relevant keywords. I know it keeps coming back to us, but it is very important, which is why I keep bringing it uh, up and again. Uh, you want to, you know, you want to make the customer feel that this product is the best choice for them and this is the only product that they have for, for whatever they're looking for it meets that goal right it it, it 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 is the best product out there for you to purchase so you know you have to make uh, small nuances that are there you want to use bold letters punctuations you want to use the right commas or exclamations wherever it is absolutely necessary you want to be able to do that right um, a plus content again is an important aspect, which I already covered, as I told you that, you know, it allows brand owners to really improve their product descriptions with additional content, images, videos, it helps you tell the story of your brand, and really differentiate your product from the competitors. And also, the most important aspect of a, uh, a plus content is also to, um, you know, it's like it's to improve the conversions of your product by really building your brand on Amazon. Now you can effectively use A plus content to craft your brand story. It is, you know, by using this feature, it will either, you either have to be brand registered, um, a seller or an emerging seller who is part of the Amazon's 
manage selling programs like Launchpad or Amazon exclusives and so on. And you can also add A plus content only to the products that are part of your approved uh, brand catalog. So I think that is also a very important uh, part that you need to be careful of. And again, there's a lot of benefits that, you know, just by using A plus content, and being brand registered, the benefits are it brings in more conversions, more sales, helps you to fight counterfeits. That is also another important point. It will help you help you get your product better review and um, reduce the you know product returns and so on. So again, there are a lot of best practices for that. Now talking about product images and um, videos, uh, again, you know, having a good product quality or have a good image quality of the product is extremely important in attracting potential customers to your listing. So I think they are the only visual representation of your product and hence uh, they need to be as close to the product as I mentioned earlier. Um, and again, there are a lot of uh, guidelines that you can follow, like use a good DSLR camera to take those pictures, have more, um, I think, videos created they do really well in advertisements as well so yeah i think that's pretty much it i would say okay um did you have a question on listing optimization Pratik? uh no, not not exactly i think we are uh, running a little uh, late so i think we'll just go through the content once and then i'll just pop the questions for that okay cool all right, I've covered this and now, um, okay. Product marketing, I think we come to the gist of the presentation, right? Like the, the crux of it is all about this and how are we doing product marketing and rather why are we doing this product marketing again? You know, sorry, excuse me. So, so it's gonna stop for me. You guys can see my presentation still? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it because it's a product market. Um, okay, using Amazon PPC again to ensure your, you know, you want to ensure that your uh, campaigns have sufficient budget to keep running and also engaging customers throughout the Prime Day. If you've advertised during Prime Day before, review your results and really see if there are learnings to apply to this year. For example, if you ran out of budget um, during Prime Day last year, you know, you want to you wanna see if you can prevent that happening this year by setting maybe a higher budget. And also you can estimate the budget to really be set this year by multiplying your previous cost per click and your conversion ratio and really how many clicks you have. You can set it as a base goal to see, you know, if you want to get better or improve that if you ran out of it, of course. And then uh, another thing you want to do is you want to also so, uh, market your product on social media. So it's on and off Amazon both. I would say so customers browsing on Amazon during Prime Day might might you know not really have a specific product or brand in mind, but in fact they may be there to just discover new brands altogether. And that's a really good way to make your segue or kind of get your foot in the door, make your foray into that space when people are still just there to explore a new product, right? So you know, you're finding effective ways, uh, building your brand's presence is really key to connecting with those prime day shoppers driving all those purchases and turning those connections into meaningful lasting customer relationships i would say again uh, the benefits that you would get out of this will be you know if you choose to set um, some advertising on social media platforms the opportunity to increase in sales and brand awareness because you're creating your brand awareness there there if you're a newly launched product and so on you also have the possibility to connect with new uh, to brand uh, you know purchases and you're getting new customers on board for your brand, the ability to reach millions of potential customers who might have not known about your brand otherwise. So you want to promote them as much as you can on other mediums, right? Um, also, again, just basically uh, propagating your product on this is just teaching about the product, talking about maybe competition, how you're better. Those things can all be brought well through like, you know, a lot of, I think, Instagram reels, uh, Facebook ads, you know, on WhatsApp, I mean, people are doing all kinds of things that are pretty much in every platform possible, right? So that becomes extremely important to have that visibility for your product. And also you have a direct line of communication with your consumers. Okay. So, uh, right, I mean, I think I've already covered this.
and now um so talking about social media ma marketing how you can also use different amazon uh, attributed programs there are a lot of programs that you can also be assisted through amazon to make sure that you get the word out there and really make noise about the product that you have launched or really uh, creating that brand awareness through that right so there's one amazon influencer program which is an extension of the amazon associate or affiliate program that brings product related content uh, from influencers into amazon to really help consumers research and discover products that they might be interested in also the main advantage of the amazon influencer program is that you may not really even have to contact your um, influencer to get them listed to the product it will if you've just created a high quality product that people love it's possible that influencers will be contacting you and you know they'll probably be including their your product in their store front even without requesting it so that's another thing that you should really take you know uh, and you can take part of this and you can be a part of this program and you should leverage it rather i would say another thing that i want to mention is also the amazon attribution program so for advertisers really using non amazon channels for their marketing activities i think um, amazon attribution can really help you understand how these strategies are leading to shopping activity sales on amazon and also using these um, insights from amazon attribution which includes detail pages your product detail pages add to cart pages um, um your sales metrics optimize your non amazon marketing channels you can use those analytics to kind of optimize those insights and use it for those on off amazon right um also you want to make sure you know or you research and learn about the channels and publishers that are driving the most value for your business on amazon so you want to continue to invest in those high performing channels to really test and learn how to improve performance on those other channels now for all those non amazon audiences you want to get an insight into which of those audiences has actually engaged outside of you know amazon are really expressing interest in your product so on your detail pages or store pages i mean you get all that analytics and data from these attribution programs you'll be able to see the traffic that's coming in and all of that right so you want to test different ways you can do maybe split testing or ab testing of you know different ways to engage them further in their customer journeys uh also creative messages i think you want to also test how a creative messages or visuals really across the publishers and channels to see you know what worked and in which platform it worked better right so those kind of metrics is also available through these programs and you can use these learnings to really get those insights and you know make tailor messages to customers across the shopping journey or to update your store and then especially if your product has really done well during prime day i would say with with of course a great uh, let's say if you had a good bsr which is a best selling rank you know that is what it stands for you can always leverage on that non amazon ch channels to spread the word about it or make noise about that hey you know we've got like the amazon's choice uh, or that category and you want to make noise about that uh, on the other channels as well so those are some of these um, things that you know you can look to do um bundle your products okay and this is Priyanka, an example uh, we are getting some questions but i will park them for the end because sure. i know there is some very important things coming up so i don't want people to miss it so we'll park the questions for uh, the, at the end of the session so yeah please sure. keep going so sure. so yeah i forgot to mention and i was just going in the conversation i forgot to show you what a good optimized listing also this although it was mentioned on my ppt there's a picture of a good optimized listing where how they vividly described and put bullet points and so on and here too i think i've given examples of you know what a good bundle product and how it really adds value so bundle products also uh, you know people don't confuse as a different brand that you're working with and bundling it together it's maybe if you have uh, a few products or multiple varied products by falls in the same brand that's what you want to do let's say fuji film insta mix you selling the polaroid with the ink right so that is a good bundle offer you get like a combo uh, package to them uh, with a lower whatever price that you want to quote right and also this magnetic wrist band so it's like a wrist band where you or you put all your nails in there so with any uh, you know mechanic or whoever is working they can just with the ease they can just use the nail and the hammer and it's just easy so these are some examples of um bundle product that you're just making them convenient to buy and again they're complementing each other so that's another strategy that you want to uh, incorporate right on this now um this is just why you want to use 
PPC and what it typically does, you know, it gives you more product visibility, more sales, creates more brand awareness and maintains the SERP and sales rank and so on. Now, I think I am going to take like undivided attention of yours and I'm going to talk about these very, very important crucial strategies. I'm going to be giving examples on some. I know we are rushed for time and I'm kind of like, I rushed through the initial part of the conversation to really give more emphasis or lay more emphasis on these strategies um, about uh, PPC. So let's get started. Okay. So target your top selling uh, products through product targeting ads. So I would say, you know, you want to advertise your best selling products to the audiences that have recently viewed a similar product, right? So let's say sellers would really remarket over the previous 30 days to all the audiences that have viewed products in that similar or, or in a specific category. Another way to market your products is to use brand for retargeting. So make use of your top selling product to run ads for those products that you want to get sold across. And once a seller is really browsing your storefront, they're highly likely uh, to look at other products that you offer. And so this is really your chance to put or place your products which are not doing so well and get them noticed. It's, it's a, another term for this is called brand looping, which means that within your own brand page, you can also have advertisements of those products as I mentioned were not doing well in that same banner, maybe below or at the end of the page, you can have banners or other products of your brand will be advertised on the same uh, page itself. Another thing you can do is also run campaigns on your top child ASIN. So what that typically means is that if you don't have the bandwidth to create like a com uh, com uh, combined package for your variations to run on individual campaigns or all those variables, that you can really run a PPC campaign only for those top performing um, variations. Again, this PPC strategy is I mean, it really works well, provided that those variations are also listed uh, within as a child ASIN with the parent ASIN, if that makes sense. So you really don't want to miss out on increasing your average size of the order value and really other perks that come with grouping the products together. And I, I brought this up earlier as well, but it'll be easier for your pocket to run campaigns on that and also fairly more efficient, uh, which does not really devoid you of your budget and your campaign and marketing goals, right? So the sales will eventually trickle down into the other options. So it's really because when, you know, customers visit your ads, they also see other variants available for that particular thing. So if one thing is not getting sold, they can see the other things that, you know, that somebody might be interested in. They might probably uh, just the visibility to that page uh, will go up in that same listing, right? Um, so now I, I, I'll just give you an example, right? So taking a previous example, I would say, Let's say um, um, beef jerky, okay? It's a top selling thing in the US. Uh, and maybe I should have not used this, but for the Indian audience, but oh well. So beef jerky, now let's say we are selling four different flavors of beef, jer beef jerky. It could be barbecue, teriyaki, kajun, and black pepper as a separate chai lesson, but in the same listing. So of these four, I think black pepper, uh, let's say is your best seller. Now, if you run PPC ad for all the four flavors in the same ad group, then they will end up competing amongst themselves uh, for ad placements, which obviously you don't want because ultimately it's still your brand and you're you know, throwing out those variations. So it will lead to less, uh, wasted ad spends and also increased A cost for that entire ad campaign that you're running. So it will also lower your ads efficiency. So on the other hand, if you focus your efforts only on the black pepper, which is again, the best seller, uh, the black pepper variation and run dedicated ad campaigns only for that particular flavor, then your listing will obviously get more traffic on Amazon through that, right? So with a broad range of people really visiting your page, uh, chances uh, are that some of them will also fancy other flavors and not just black pepper. So a customer originally looking for a beef jerky black pepper may very well browse through the other variants, excuse me, other variants and maybe end up buying a kajun or a teriyaki or a barbecue flavor as well. So this could really increase the price of black pepper slightly more than the other flavors to give you an advantage to the underdogs. So, and again, you can also alternatively create different campaigns uh, for different variations that, of course, instead of grouping all those four flavors together, you want to 
in the same ad group you want to create a separate campaign for all of these different flavors so this just gives you better control over the acos and your daily budget okay okay uh, wow i'm definitely going out of breath <laughs> it's too much to talk target your top competing products um, for better visibility and sales i think this is also a very self explanatory point uh, where you know when you're finding the right keywords that work for you you also look for keywords that your competition has used or that has been indexed by these competing products and typically taking those and using them in your listing right so while you cannot always because it can be like exactly you cannot always do an exact match of those keywords to your product you can always ca always cash in on the visibility of those keywords right so and how do you really do that you run ads for these products for example if if you know you are like a cat litter company and you see another cat litter product doing better find the right banner and the title to get more traction when someone views that product and direct them to your uh, storefront instead or direct them to your page instead uh, that's what it says okay views marketing give me one second as i will drink some water please be sure okay <clears throat> excuse me views remarketing with sponsored display ads Okay. Um, now you also want to take advantage of the data that Amazon has collected from Prime Day, which I mentioned how you can get that through those application programs and so on, by using some of those features also from sponsored display ads. Now, sponsored display ads really allow sellers to retarget potential buyers both on and off Amazon. So these features include audiences, views, marketing is actually remarketing is actually a feature. and amazon audiences with these features you can actually typically target retarget and reengage those shoppers who have viewed or shown interest in your listings or similar products in that particular category in the last 30 days so when you are actually retargeting with sponsored display ads bids are per click both on and off amazon so you want to create customized ads by adding their logo or by creating unique um what you might call it unique headlines or specific type of audiences now depending on the amount that you decide to bid amazon will either spend more or less depending on how likely they consider that a shopper viewing the ad will make a purchase right so amazon will never really go over that daily budget that you've set for yourself or for your campaigns and you know this is set actually at the time you even create it so they will make sure that you know that is used and that's it you need to top up and bid higher and so on <clears throat> new to brand metrics for retargeted ad now these also really help you to understand the new sellers which have engaged with your products you want to target retarget those customers for better sales as i mentioned they may have come to your page for the first time they may were they were maybe just window shopping around to learn more about other products and other brands and you know not just sticking to their own uh, brand loyalty that they had with others so this is actually a new key feature that uh, really helps you measure which of these sales generated through the campaigns can be attributed to new or existing customers so obviously as i said amazon is a great tool to even provide you with all of these data and what you really need to do is make it like you know what you make out of that data and how you comprehend that and you know use those insights for your own marketing campaigns is crucial so um these are a lot of these metrics are actually pro given to you uh, through these analytics right so again now you can also see through this which new customers made purchases from you during the prime day sales and also run ads which were tailored to such consumers to see if only those like they bought only due to the sale like if they came to your page just cuz of the prime day thing uh, happening or you know they're likely to become regular customers and if you run display ads on and off amazon you can use this lead out period which i mentioned the 14 days post prime day period to really reengage your brand's existing audience to give drive loyalty and you know in market audiences who may not have purchased your product otherwise but you can really leverage um, amazon dsp here and remarketing audiences features to optimize your new to brand metric sales and detail page uh, view rate so which means that you they're like very uh, impactful when you're really analyzing which prime day campaigns drove the highest percentage of customers to your page that's primarily when and again the lot of metrics that go uh, with it right i mean you can talk about new to brand purchases so the number of purchases 
uh, product, the you know brand made by customers for the first time in the last twelve months, for instance. There is new to brand units, so you it tells you about the number of units um, that were of course purchased again for the first time. So the new to brand itself term means that first time people coming to your page, visiting your page. So everything is just related to new to brand. It's only telling you data about all those new customers who came in and uh, generated sales through that, right? Uh, we have new to brand purchase rate, which is um, it is in relation to again the number of ad display uh, purchases, unit sold, product sales, return on ads. When you get all these kinds of metrics uh, through that. Um, okay, great. We're almost towards the end. So now manage your product reviews. Of course, it's like a no-brainer. This one, of course, the more reviews a product gets, and you know, the more trustworthy it becomes, the most uh, reviews. I mean, even as you and I, when we go to buy a new product, we're looking for you know authentication. We're looking for validation uh, of you know other people who have probably used and purchased those products. So a lot of people are new again, uh, new to brand customers who've actually come new to your brand are really looking for those uh, reviews to make that purchase for the first time. So it's always it's always a good practice to have good reviews. Uh, the more product, the more reviews a product gets, the more credibility it, it builds for that brand and for that particular product also. So you also want to, what you also want to do, you want to address the negative reviews right away. So you, what you don't want to do is miss out on that, right? During prime day and of course year round, you don't want to lose sales based on negative product reviews. So, um, Unfortunately, that is really a, a big part of, you know, just doing business on Amazon. Some customers will be unhappy with the purchase and will refuse to move, remove those negative. They will just remove it from the comment. They will just remove it. But the good thing is to address it. So I would say that, you know, you want to engage with the customer regardless of whether it's a bad review and, you know, how well you handle the situation. The same customer who's probably given you a negative review can turn into a positive review also. So you don't want to miss out on that. So, you know, it's just like just responding to them does not make it a, a vain, uh, like in vain effort, right? Like it's a futile effort to do. No, I wouldn't say that. Um, the last strategy and also a very important one, I think all strategies are important, but this is also uh, something new that maybe, you know, uh, not many are aware of, I think is editorial recommendations and pricing. So editorial recommendations help you rank on Amazon pages by Amazon affiliates were actually part of the Amazon on-site program. Uh, this program is actually an extension of the Amazon affiliate program that really brings product-related content from third parties to Amazon. And to help customers really research and discover products, again, they give reviews, they give recommendations for people to buy. Uh, so they are actually onboarded through an outside program, as I mentioned, and uh, you know they write about the product. So product recommendations, from these affiliates who have been invited to be part of that on-site program, uh, you know, makes a hell of a difference because they are reviewing, researching the product. And based on that, they will give, and I mean, it's an authentic thing to have uh, for your brand, right? They receive, of course, affiliate commissions uh, purchased through the recommendation, but, you know, it will lead to you ranking high on the SERPs, also brands being featured in editorial recommendation have seen that you know, there has been an increase in uh, the relevancy for the keywords that has been used with that editorial presence or improve their PPC efficiency, ACOS, improve their organic conversion. So there are a lot of good must-haves. Uh, you know, if you have this, there's nothing, no harm in having that because of course there's more pros uh, to it than cons or if you feel that, oh, I don't know why and how this will happen, I think, uh, I mean, there are some prerequisites on why, you know, you need to have that, like, let's say your product needs to be four star rated. Um, it should have at least 100 plus reviews, uh, organic keyword rank in the top 40. Um, that's what some of these things, I mean, these are the prerequisites for you even to have like a editorial recommendation. High levels of inventory is one, but I would say no relation to, of course, drugs, religion, sex, no medical claims, all of those kind of factors also play in for these recommendations. So, you know, you want to make sure that uh, all these are taken care of. And then pricing. Um, this is something that I've seen more sellers uh, don't really optimize on enough. And in my experience of, you know, dealing with multiple sellers and having, you know, spoken to many sellers, I feel that 
uh, they're not doing enough of this, which is a great strategy, but they kind of miss out on, uh, you know, implementing this. Uh, so, you know, if let's say if this, if, you know, the pricing strategy that you've implemented for your prime date, got you high sales volume, then what you want to do is you want to keep that same pricing going forward with higher profits. Now, what that typically means is that if you have increased your product pricing for prime day or, you know, during prime day, because uh, CPC rates, which is cost per click, rates are also very high and rates do go up during prime day. However, post prime day, they do go down. So you want to continue to keep that sales momentum post prime day. So you can continue to advertise on those lower CPC rates but higher product prices in order to continue getting that momentum on sales and you know still getting that visibility to your product. So with that, I guess we come to the end of the presentation and 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 Pratik is like taking a that, sigh of relief that no, you know, so that was not the a <laughs> lot of information, Priyanka. Like there are so many things you know uh, to be taken from this. But yes, uh, I am. The last thing I just want to mention, Pratik, before you take it, I'll just take a minute. You know, it's like, Perfect. I just want to emphasize again, guys, and who was watching, um, that, you know, Seller App does have a freemium feature where you get to access all those primary features for absolutely free, no cost, no credit card included, including advertising. So we have custom rules, we have day parting, all of those features, which is included in that freemium feature that we have at Seller App. And uh, we also do monthly reporting. We give a lot of market insights, business intelligence at the keyword level, search term level, category level. Um, and so, of course, you know, if you want to know more, do write to me or support at sellerapp.com. You can also sign up with us and also avail the free expert audit that your account will be eligible for and also schedule a demo. So that, that's what I wanted to end my presentation with. But yeah, and, uh, yeah. questions, uh, Priyanka, and I'll just shoot them quickly because we are just you know uh we have less time but yeah firstly so can you explain a little bit uh, more about the amazon influencer program like what should a seller do from their end to avail this how does it work so quickly can you just share a couple of thoughts on that on the amazon influencer program on sorry amazon influencer program and what did you want to know about that uh, <clears throat> how does it work how can a seller avail that particular program or uh, details on that so it is, I mean, through Amazon itself, you can be a part of this influencer program. Uh, I think you can write to me about this and I can, I mean, there's a whole guideline, there's a whole thing, you know, that uh, Amazon website has the best practices. Uh, for now, I know that Amazon attribution, uh, which is um, actually now available in the United States, Canada, UK, I have to check if it's even available in India. So that is something that I want to check on. Even for the influencer program, I want to check if it's there. Okay. okay. Uh, it, is, it is basically just an extension of the affiliate program that I brought up uh, later for okay. the editorial, uh, editorial recommendation part. So it is an extension of that. And that really brings product-related content from influencers, as I said, onto Amazon to help customers research and discover your product better. Got it. Okay. Uh, moving on. Again, a very specific question, but... Uh, what is a good NTB rate, uh, new to brand uh, matrices? So any specific number which is there in place or is it very subjective? For, for which one? For your uh, product? Uh, yeah, so the question is what is a good NTB rate? So I'm not sure if it's a specific rate or there that are... That is very subjective because it depends on multiple things, right? It depends on what category you're getting into. It depends on which product you're getting into. It also depends on what the other uh, competing or competitor products are offering, what rate they're offering. So as I mentioned okay. in my presentation, right, you want to, if, if you're still someone who's looking to launch your product and you don't even know say, which category to get into, you want to search for that. And that is also like this, this, this metric is also searchable. Even with seller app, okay. it's searchable, right? Um, you know, so you can actually look for something which is not a very niche uh, category. You can look for something which has low to moderate competition, and then you can price your product accordingly. There's no right or wrong answer for this. I can't say that you know you can uh, place it at ten uh, uh, rupees or ten dollars or uh, fifty dollars. You have to see in that category what others are pricing, and then based okay. on that make that decision. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, so one of the attendees wanted to summarize all the seven points, but I'm sure that is going to take time. And for that exact it's reason, whosoever, <laughs> yeah, uh, for that exact reason, I would request this particular uh, attendee to write an email to Priyanka. She would be 
uh, really happy to discuss this further and to send you these absolutely. pointers. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, one specific question, but again, not sure if there is a specific answer to this or not. But how much or uh, how many keywords should one add in a listing? Is there a number? Any or how how can one know that how many keywords should be added in a listing? You don't want to go overboard with it. Also, it needs to be uh, again. Let's say if you are talking about a wine glass, or as I said, if I take an example of a coffee mug, how much can you add? You want to look. I mean, there are metrics as I talked about the search volume. How many people are searching for a coffee mug? What is the impression rate that they're getting? How relevant is that keyword? All those metrics that I discussed. You want to look into those metrics and then decide how many. Just adding. You want to make that listing readable and. discoverable and of course just adding the keywords will not make sense right adding the right uh, keywords would make sense but that does again there's no number it could be 2 it could be 3 it could be maybe more it depends totally on what type of title you're writing how well you are you know um, that listing is described and all of that so i think it it again all of these questions that you asked whether it was for keyword research whether it is for listing uh, that you want to create it depends on a lot of research that you do prior to entering the market so there are a lot of metrics that you want to look for before you uh, you know create your brand or even decide that this is what i want to go out for and this is what i want to sell start selling on amazon before you start that journey on amazon okay sure and uh, just i would say one last question we have and someone is asking that so you talked about a lot of uh marketing outside of amazon platform the sem marketing on different platforms so uh, uh, an attendee just wanted to check does amazon allow that or is there any specific restriction which a seller has that they cannot advertise it or post amazon links or they are free to advertise their amazon products using their amazon links as and where they want to no so i think we uh, i think i mentioned right amazon dsp is one which allows you to advertise uh, your product on and off amazon and also <clears throat> you know when uh, there was a question i think Uh, SEM marketing, where you know you can create your brand website, and you can also add buy with Prime on your storefront. So it's just, I mean, again, this is probably just launched in US right now, and I don't think it's in India. But you can do uh, SEM marketing on Facebook, Insta, WhatsApp, and really can you can check the attribute, the the uh, analytics or the impressions using Amazon attribution as well. Got it. Okay, and. Finally, this is definitely the last question. Uh, but, it <laughs> now, <laughs> but it came just now. But it came just now. How do we exactly measure uh, measure the source of traffic on Amazon? Is there a way to do that from where There the traffic so is many, coming? Uh, the again, I think the analytics. You need to look at uh, the attribution program. It gives you tons of analysis on every channel that you are promoting your product, that you're advertising your product. That will give you a lot of data points to you know uh, take in and. you know make like a seamless insight from that and really make your sure. uh, advertising decisions based on that so okay. the attribution program is great for that okay uh got it so yeah we are running out of time and in case anyone has any other questions please uh, feel free write to write to me to you know uh, if you have your query you can yeah. also write to support at celerap.com dr.bor at celerap.com as i said we have this free audits that we do if you want to schedule a demo with us Feel free to do that. It's all on our website. You can sign in and you can explore all these metrics that you talked about: keyword research, um, all the you know listing optimization. What are these um, metrics to tell you whether your listing is indexed or not, whether it is uh, a good you know keyword to use or not? All of those metrics are available. So um, check that out, guys. Definitely, Benga. Thanks a lot for your inputs. I am sure. Uh, all the attendees had a lot of information to grasp, and post this session, they would be able to retarget their customers even after the Prime Day. And I just hope uh, they hopefully some of them they well. implement and kind of see results. I'd Definitely. love please write to me exactly. and let me know if that worked for you. I'd love to know sure. if that really worked. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Priyanka, and thanks everyone for Thank attending so the session. And stay safe. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.